Bad baby got this last laugh. Patrick CC. Bergoli was the laughing stock of the internet for years after her appearance on the Dr. Phil show. Okay. Her presumptuous attitude, attention-seeking tactics, and accused appropriation of black culture just made people despise her. Patrick, I love you. Usually you're pretty accurate with your work. I'm going to give you that early like, but let's not lie. All right. This is Mr. Phil. My He's not a doctor. He does not have a doctorate. This is a fraud. He does not have a license to practice. He just gives unlicensed advice on a television show. But it also got her filthy rich. Danielle's career was literally handed to her, but unlike most people who get 15 minutes of fame, she turned it into an empire. This girl was a child when her worst moments were being broadcasted to the entire world. Today, she has transformed into someone we barely even recognize. She has kids! It was all a part of the plan. On September 14th, 2016, Dr. Phil aired the eighth episode of its 15th season, which featured a 13-year-old girl from Florida named Bro, Danielle Bergoli. What? Danielle was seemingly a typical teenager whose rebellious and delinquent behavior reached a point where her mother could not control her, knife-wielding, skipping school, and stealing cars for a quick joyride. She even stole a crew member's car while the episode was being filmed. <laughs> Bro, she stole... Bro, you know what, man? I actually applaud that, man. Fuck that show. No cap. Despite Danielle's obvious pitfalls, people were also pointing the finger at her mother. Mom, my daughter is so out of control and provocative. Also, mom, allows daughter to install a stripper pole in her bedroom. Insane. But the biggest problem her mother had was Danielle's love for violence. She liked to fight. It's important to note that the show producers encouraged Danielle to be as rambunctious as she could on camera, because it's more entertaining. At one point, Danielle even challenged her own mother to a fight on the set, but she also challenged anyone else in the audience to throw some hands. Hey, how about huh? Okay, look, quick question, my parents in the chat. Look, this is why you might have to actually beat your kids sometimes. The reason I say that is because I would never in my life consider even, bro, if my mom is in the process of hitting me, if I even defend myself, it's a, pro like, I literally, I think my life is over. I think I'm about to die. Like, it's death. Death is going to be the next possibility for me. Let alone challenging my mom to a fight. That is outrageous because I know the consequence of that. You feel me? That's why sometimes I think, like, it's nice to be coddling and to be supportive, but there also has to be another side where you're strict and instilling discipline, even if it doesn't come in the form of an ass whooping. You feel me? I'm just saying. Catch me outside, how about that? Nobody wanted to go the rounds with Danielle, but these six words would drastically change her life forever. Her manufactured black scent that she claimed- I'm fighting my kids, not gonna lie. Bro, not fight, bro. A fight means they're reciprocating, my nigga. You're beating them, okay? If your kids are fighting back, you've lost as a parent, bro. Just to let you know, <laughs> all right? is due to her <laughs> being from the streets, made the phrase, catch me outside, how about that, sound like, catch me outside, how about that? And I don't think I've ever seen something more viral in my life. Your parents, maybe even your grandparents know about this iconic catchphrase. She became a social media sensation known as the Cash Me Outside Girl. Danielle was used by boomers as confirmation bias to prove that Gen Z is a bunch of entitled brats. But even Gen Z was laughing at her because they knew she was their generation's jester. It was like this perfect moment where all generations, all walks of life came together to agree that the Cash Me Outside Girl was a joke. The Dr. Phil YouTube channel gained 8 million views in one month from the clip of Danielle's episode episode. To this day, the channel has accumulated over 200 million YouTube what? views just from Danielle's appearances on the show. But the crazy part is, Danielle didn't even know she was the laughingstock of the internet at the time. Dr. Phil had Danielle transported to the Turnabout Ranch after her episode. Turnabout Ranch is neither owned nor operated by Dr. Phil, but is an independent residential treatment center for troubled youth located in Utah. Good, that's actually the first time she received any sort of licensed help from a real fucking professional. Not from a fucking fake doctor. The Ranch is a therapeutic program that aims to help teenagers and young adults dealing with behavioral and emotional issues. Danielle didn't get to experience her newfound wave of clout since she didn't have access to social media or a cell phone while in Utah. After she returned home, she opened social media and was shocked. At first I didn't know how to handle it. I was just like, my instinct was to like, 
cuss everyone out who said it to me. Since her Dr. Phil episode was the most successful episode of all time, it only made sense for his producers to bring her back on the show. In February of 2017, just four months after her original appearance, she returned to Dr. Phil to a studio without an audience where they discussed her time at Turnabout Ranch. She said her time there was fine before expressing that she was happy that she went. We would later find out that she was lying, and her time at the ranch was much darker and more sinister than she was comfortable admitting. What? She also said that Dr. Phil was nothing before she came on the show, which prompted even more people to continue making memes about the bratty child. The memes prompted hip-hop producer DJ Suede, the remix god, to make a song sampling her infamous catchphrase. Suede's trap beat titled Catch Me Outside sits at over 60 million views on YouTube, but we realized the true power of the meme when this song peaked at number 72 on the Billboard Hot 100. A meme trap beat spent three weeks on the Billboard Hot 100. 2017 was wild. Danielle and her mother, Barbara, sued DJ Suede over unpaid royalties for the remix. Barbara- Yo, producers sampling shit and not crediting people is like, whoa, why? Especially when you named your beat after her. It's not even like a tiny portion of it, my nigga. Come on, bro. Barbara alleged that the DJ and his manager exploited her daughter after they agreed to let them use her voice and popular catchphrase on the- Oh, they agreed? <laughs> His manager exploited her daughter after they agreed to let them use her voice and popular catchphrase on the record. Uh, never mind. Never mind. They agreed. Take back what I said, good sir. They're in the wrong. Now this shit pop off. Now they want royalties. You should have agreed upon that beforehand. Tough. According to legal documents obtained by TMZ, Danielle accepted a deal where she would get half of the remix profits. However, Barbara alleged that DJ Suede refused to pay them their royalties. Suede responded to the lawsuit saying, My team and lawyer already read y'all the contract several times for months, and we have everything on paper. How about that? He added, shaking my head. 15 minutes went by pretty fast, huh? Ironically, it was actually DJ Suede whose 15 minutes of fame that he got from Danielle was over. Yo, Caster, thank you for the five gifted subs. Appreciate you, my guy. Thank you so much, bro. Agent, is you going to the gym? Yeah, I went last night. I'm going to go tonight. Because nice. the world was Caster, about to be introduced you, to that baby, whose fame was about to last a whole lot longer than 15 minutes. But this break from today's sponsor will only last about a minute. I'm gonna be honest, bro. She's not famous, my nigga. She's rich because she's exploiting lonely men. She's, I don't think she's famous, bro. I think fame is when you can't go outside and do normal people things because your popularity is too strong. Like, I think Drake is famous. Travis Scott is famous, my nigga. Like, I don't think... We just throw around the word fame, my nigga. Like, just because you might need security from time to time. Tell her to go to Europe. Tell her to go to Africa. Tell her to go to Asia. And if you're still moving mountains in those countries, that's fame. That's actually fame. That's what that looked like, bro. Eunice, I appreciate you. Thank you so much, bro. Knew she could be a star. He reached out and arranged an appointment with Danielle and her mother. Love, I said, I Thank want you. to manage you. Give me some time. I'll make you a star. I'll make you guys rich. We want to make this thing happen. With no hesitation, they were like, okay, done. They had no clue what that meant. Colger wanted to take advantage of Danielle's bad girl persona and take this villain, relentless, crazy attitude kid and just brand her as this super villain. She's going to be the one that the kids have to hide from their parents. Wanting to find a way to turn followers into money, Adam solicited the help of Dan Roof, the founder of a digital firm named Flute. Dan came on board as Danielle's digital manager, booking live appearances and setting up sponsorship deals. The same week Danielle reappeared on Dr. Phil, she starred in Kodak Black's music video for Everything 1K. This video was literally just Kodak's song with Danielle flexing cash, wearing grills, and sitting on a Rolls Royce while mouthing Kodak's lyrics, which prompted the video to gain almost 50 million views. On her trip home from LA, Danielle boarded a Spirit Airlines flight where she and her mother got into a fight with a passenger. But as other camera angles were released, it seemed- Bro, that's what that's the one thing that sucks about Spirit. Like, niggas don't give a fuck if they get banned from Spirit. You feel me? I would never act like that on a Delta flight, bro. Cause I get banned from Delta. Nigga, I gotta drive. I gotta ride. No. It's like, no. <laughs> bro, if niggas get banned from Spirit, they don't give a fuck, bro. They'll just fly something else, man. It's okay. Like the passenger was potentially the aggressor and Danielle <laughs> was just- a In fact, I think it's weird that- Okay, I think it's weird that flying Spirit- is like a joke to people though. Like it's a bad airline. That's why I don't want to fly it. Generally speaking, like it's not comfortable, my nigga. But like I saw a clip two days ago on Twitter and it was like caught Sneeko flying spirit. 
Bro, what? You know, sometimes Spirit is the only airline with the flight, especially when you're booking things the morning of, the night before and shit like that. That's the way it is. If I want to, if right now, if I decide I want to go to Miami, I don't have many options to go like in specific times of the day. You might have to be a spirit demon for the day. You might have to. That might be what has that. But when we went to the Yachty thing, Rolling Loud, I booked my ticket six hours before. I think I had to ride Southwest there and American back. That's just the way it is sometimes, bro. Defending her mom. You got the AMP heli. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. That sounded so cool, right? Like, that needs to be a thing, my nigga. One day, one day, the AMP heli. I'm going to take Thomas to ask you fucking wake up. You want to be black? You <laughs> Danielle and her friends got into another fight with random people one Saturday night in Lake Worth, Florida. Oh shit, I don't remember that. Then in April, she was cited for possession of marijuana in Boynton Beach. The 14-year-old was unsupervised, out of control, and on top of that being ridiculed by random people on the streets. It was a recipe for disaster. It also became increasingly obvious that her mother was no longer interested in helping Danielle when she realized she could make money from her daughter's delinquency. But despite her bad behavior, she was cultivating a real fan base through YouTube, Motion! where she uploaded consistent reaction videos showcasing Motion! more of her race. She's getting 2 million, 7 million views on reactions? and personality that were generating over 1 that's, million views that's per tough. video. If you had a child and a hoe tried you in front of them, what would you do? I would go to my car, turn on my car, put the air on in the car, strap my kid into their seat, and go beat the f***ing life out of that her manager also knew that she had some rapping ability. And let's be honest, in 2017, at the height of the Lil Pump and Lil Zayn yeah, era, you didn't months. need much skill. Plus, influencers like Rice Gum and Jake Paul were gaining unimaginable view counts on their terrible music. Holder <laughs> proceeded to book studio time for Danielle, but she was hesitant at first. I was like, I don't want to put these headphones on. I don't want to get in this booth. But then she had a change of heart. I was like, I'm prettier than all these people in here. I looked at the people in the room and I was like, I'm better than you. I can do this. I'll be fine. I won't look stupid. The Soon ego of death. God damn, nigga. Yo, one time I was like, bro, this streaming shit is not for me, man. And I looked around. I just saw a whole bunch of lame ass niggas around me. I said, bro, I could do this shit, nigga. I'm, I'm really about to be a streamer, man. I'm about to stream every single day, man. I'm, I'm a better streamer than all these niggas, bro. <laughs> Yo, that justification is so crazy. <laughs> Soon she was in a meeting opposite Atan Ben Horan, the global head of artists and repertoire at Warner Music Group. Ben put together a team of 14 writers and producers to work on Danielle's first professional single, High Bit. They started her music rollout with a track called These Hoes, which peaked at number 77 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, making Danielle the youngest female rap artist to debut on the Hot 100. It also what? made Baby the third youngest solo artist of all time to chart on the Hot 100, behind JoJo and Stevie Wonder. The track's success led to Danielle signing a record what? deal with Atlantic Records. She then remixed Kodak Black's Roll in Peace and T Grizzly and Lil Yachty's From D to the A, but even her biggest haters could not deny her second debut single, High Bit which reached number 68 on the Billboard Hot 100 while the music video accumulated over 200 million views since its initial upload. The song was eventually certified platinum less than five months later. Most people on the internet were calling her music trash, but the numbers didn't lie. Plus, she wasn't afraid of criticism. She's low-key smart, okay? I'm not gonna f***ing say she's smart because she's a little bitch. I'm a little bitch. I'm a bitch, but you're the one sitting in the busted ass chair with your busted ass forehead, with your busted ass face, and your busted ass chair with the forehead shit. Feel me? Chill with the forehead shit. That shit wasn't funny. So why are you coming for me? Rappers like Lil Yachty voiced their support for her career, which was followed by a collaboration titled Gucci Flip Flops that peaked at number 79 on the Billboard Hot 100 before receiving a platinum certification. Her string of success led to Bad Baby receiving a nomination. Chat, what's the song that goes, I just fucked up bitch in some Gucci flip flop? What song is that, chat? What song is that? So this is a different song, all right at the 2018 Billboard Music Awards for Best Female Rap Artist, alongside Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. Over the next few months, Baby collaborated with artists like Ty Dolla Sign, YG, Lil Baby, City Girls, Charlie XCX, and Asian Doll. She announced her Band in the USA tour across North America and Europe, where she sold out various 150 to 500 person venues in nearly every city she visited. 
but whenever she had some positive momentum, she would revert back to her old self. In peak 2018 tomfoolery, Bad Baby runs into her arch nemesis, Woe Vicky, <laughs> accompanied by the infamous Lil Tay for a good old fashioned scrap. But all we got was high pitched screaming and standing behind grown men pretending like they actually wanted to fight. Uh -uh. It's so about it. Bro, Lil Tay, Lil Tay is like five. Why the fuck is she there? This was huge news at the time, but this would not be their final battle. Daniela announced a six-month deal with Copycat Beauty, getting paid $900,000 to promote the brand's products on her social media and music videos. She then signed a 12-episode deal for a reality show called Bringing Up Baby. The show premiered in February of 2019 on Snapchat as one of their many Snap originals. The first episode showcased her life behind the scenes and... <laughs> Teen on Snapchat as one of their many Snap originals. The first. I like, I like how they blurred this finger. Like we couldn't tell what was happening. <laughs> bro, industry niggas is so funny to me. We, bro, just unblur the finger, my nigga. Like we know she has five fingers, bro. Episode showcased her life behind the scenes and the hurdles she encountered amid her rise in the industry. This show reportedly earned over 10 million viewers in its first 24 hours. To compare, at the time, Keeping Up with the Kardashians was only getting one and a half million views. Damn! Per episode. TMZ reported that Danielle made well over $10 million during 2019 due to her reality show. And although many still saw Danielle as the snobby kid from Dr. Phil, capitalizing on her five seconds of fame, that was the fan base she gained was undeniable. Maybe her fans saw her as a troubled teen who was misunderstood understood and taken advantage of as a child. Maybe they didn't see someone desperate for attention and rather someone who was unapologetically themselves, but there was no denying that she was still a loudmouth kid who always managed to find her way into trouble. At Cardi B's Fashion Nova launch party, Danielle decided to throw a drink of water on Iggy Azalea. Yo, what happened to Iggy Azalea? Iggy seemingly had no idea what happened, nor did she really seem to care. It looked like Danielle pre-planned the attack while hiding behind her bodyguards and trying to make a spectacle, but Iggy did not cave. Danielle claimed that Iggy was talking crazy about her on Instagram. She was referring to a Shade Room Instagram post that asked, who is going to see Bad Baby on tour? And Iggy commented, <laughs> Yeah, I always like to take, bro, when someone really pisses me off, my nigga, I just like to pour a drink on it from time to time. That's how I handle business over here, my nigga. Like, Bro, fuck with me, my nigga. You might get a drink thrown in your direction, bro. You might get some water slapped on your fucking face. That's simple as that. That's how I handle my problems in life. Like, I guess, bro. I know she did it for the views and shit, but like, Jesus, bro. Like, get it together, man. That's not even like, I don't know. Are you? Iggy responded to the incident. I get that this little girl has made a name for herself acting a damn fool on television and online, but I'm a grown up. I'm not about to waste my energy on that shit or be fighting a kid in a club. Azalea handled the situation like an adult, just making shit. Danielle look even more childish and immature. Don't talk shit on the internet, Iggy. You bitch just mad a 15 year old out sold your ass. Why the fuck is a 15 year old at these parties? No, that's that's okay if she's there for like business reasons. They got drinks and shit at these parties though, right? Sure. They got a Danielle bar also had like a habit that? of making drama about her when nobody was directing hate towards her in the first place. In an interview with People, Jermaine Dupri, legendary songwriter and record producer, expressed his disappointment with the female rap game. They all rapping about the same thing. So she thing. could just I get a drink showing us who at is the, the best rapper. For me, it's like strippers rapping. While these comments triggered responses from several women in the industry, Baby specifically replied, Jermaine Dupri can suck my d Been like 10 years since Bow Wow. Sit down, Grandpa. Since Danielle was on top of the game, she was able to run her mouth. She wasn't topping the charts, but her music videos and songs were still accumulating tens of That's millions a lot of, views, of YouTube bro. views, and she was consistently collaborating with every major industry rapper, but she was burning bridges with people who might be able to help her once her hype dies down. And as we approach 2020, people were getting really tired of Bad Baby, but they did enjoy seeing her get- I'm not gonna lie, you can't even- Dan, I don't want to look at that close up. My bad, guys. Um, you can't even think about things like that, bro. Like, when your hype dies down, Bro, if you think like that, you're already cooked, bro. If you think like that, like, bro, I want to get to know people, so when my hype dies down, you're cooked, bro. Deadass. 
Atlanta. TMZ got a hold of the footage from the fight where it seemed but they did enjoy seeing her get beat up by her biggest op, Whoa Vicky. A brawl between Danielle and Whoa Vicky occurred during a recording session in Atlanta. TMZ got a hold of the footage from the fight where it seemed as though Vicky got the best of Danielle. Baby later took to social media saying, anyone who says I got beat up is delusional. This girl ain't hit me one time. She grabbed my hair and somehow ended up on top of me. The whole time my face stayed untouched. Every normal person observing this situation is wondering why these girls are hanging out with nothing but grown men who are filming them while they physically assault each other. <laughs> That's but a really good Danielle question! Danielle posted a video to Instagram wearing box braids, the conversation around her cultural appropriation finally needed to be discussed. People were noticing Danielle slowly transforming her image and accused her of blackfishing. Because she was sporting traditionally black hairstyles and even tanning slash darkening her skin to a point where some people might even mistake her as non-white. This look Danielle is going for is now considered to be the beauty standard in pop culture. However, for the longest time, black people, specifically black women, were demonized and ridiculed for their hair, Yo, this skin, is crazy. AAV accent, and all other physical features that they were born with. Now that black women's natural features are being praised in our society, white women like Danielle can just put on a wig, tan their skin, get lip fillers and surgical procedures to reap all the benefits of being black, but also just transform back into being white whenever they want. Danielle addressed the criticism with an Instagram story. To all the black females that are saying my hair ain't meant for box braids, guess what? Y'all hair ain't meant to be straight, but y'all glue wigs onto your heads and sew Brazilian, Indian, and Peruvian hair which is anything like your natural hair texture. She then goes to deny the cultural appropriation and follow that up with, I love the way I look, plus your man agrees. And we all know I look fine AF with any hairstyle I do from any culture because I'm just that girl. I hope y'all bald-headed hoes stay up all night thinking about this. Every time she opened her mouth, it just got worse. I don't act black. I don't... I don't talking about who wants to be black. I don't understand that. After this <laughs> Wait, lots of people actually... On, on, on this beautiful MLK Day, let us rise and thank our black leaders for all they've done. What the hell? Come on, bro. Not on this day. Controversy, she remained pretty quiet until summer of 2020 when news broke that she entered a rehab facility at an undisclosed location where she'd received treatment for a combination of things, including childhood trauma and substance abuse in the form of prescription pills. Damn. Her management team told TMZ, We are very proud of Danielle for recognizing that she needed help and seeking it out. Following her release from rehab, Danielle continued her journey of healing and self-development when she posted a YouTube video breaking her silence about the Turnabout Ranch. Dr. Phil, I am going to give you from now till April 5th to issue an apology, not only to me, but to Hannah and any other child that you sent to Turnabout or any other program like this. And if you don't, I'm going to handle things my way. Danielle had played the villain character Blind, a little bit of pressure. Life, and now she was starting to gain sympathy from the internet. Danielle was inspired to share her story after a woman named Hannah Archuleta came forward a month earlier, claiming that she was sexually assaulted by a staff member at Turnabout Ranch. Hannah was also sent to the ranch by Dr. What? Phil in 2019 when she was 17 years old. The Turnabout Ranch is one of the many wilderness programs that take place in rural Utah. If you watch my video about Chet Hanks, who was also sent to a Utah camp, or if you watch the Netflix documentary Hell Camp, then you know all about the horrors of these programs. But if you don't know, wilderness therapy programs are a major part of the multi-billion dollar troubled teen industry, which also includes therapeutic boarding schools and residential treatment centers. These programs are designed for adolescents struggling with issues like drug dependency, depression, poor grades, low self-confidence, ending thoughts, and eat- Bro, we can't even trust our fucking rehab centers? Jesus, bro. God damn. If you if you have to go to rehab, you already have things to worry about, bro. Now you, on top of that, have to worry about the rehab center potentially abusing you, my nigga. Jeez. That's just such a crazy problem. You wouldn't even consider that you might have to, like, that's wild, bro. That's eating disorders. Weird. The idea is to isolate them in the middle of nowhere America to remove them from their privileges, then provide therapy and give them wilderness experiences like hiking, camping, or working on a ranch in hopes that it will allow them to recognize how good their home life actually is. However, these experiences mostly consist of doing manual labor for hours on end. And over the years, there what? have been hundreds, thousands of reports of staff members abusing, hazing, humiliating, sleep depriving, sexually assaulting, drugging, and doing some of the most horrific horrific things to these teenagers. Danielle experienced and witnessed similar horrors during her time there when she was just 13 years old. But the worst of all was witnessing a murder. She One morning I was cleaning up for breakfast 
and one of the staff members sitting right next to me, and she had her walk on her, so I heard everything. Uh, one of the kids, he had tried to steal a car or something. Everyone was screaming on the walkies, like it was really crazy, and he ended up killing one of the staff members. They made all the kids that were at Rowdy come down, and then they didn't. They told us not to tell us anything. How? A day later, they have us all, all, every kid that's at Turnabout, they have us all in a circle, and they're like, listen, there was an incident. I know some of y'all heard it over the walkies. Jimmy died. And you would think that with such appalling accusations that got Dr. Ran Phil over. would denounce the Turnabout Ranch. Uh, we don't have anything to do uh, with what happens with guests once they leave the stage. I mean, but he just played dumb. However, Danielle proved that Dr. Phil is in fact involved with the people he sends there after oh! the show. My mother signed a consent of release of information to send progress reports directly from Turnabout to the Dr. Phil show. So Cook. when you say you don't have any Cook. feedback from them, that is not true. Yeah! She hey, way to stand up to Dr. Phil! He doesn't believe that Dr. Phil is unaware of what really happens behind closed doors at the ranch. Plus, a murder did take place at this ranch. You would think that at the very least, Dr. Phil would stop recommending it as a precautionary measure, but he continues to praise the ranch. We sent this young woman to uh, Turnabout Ranch, which is a very serious, responsible place for kids to go to get their values straight and get their heads on right. Try to be an emotional compass and point parents in a direction. What the f direction is that? Sexual abuse, murders, and, f and torture? That's that's the direction? Oh, that's phenomenal. Start your to-do list, parents. Have your kid watch somebody get murdered, have them get sexually assaulted, and have them get tortured. They'll come out great. Even if Dr. Phil is innocent, maybe he should consider investigating these facilities before using his massive platform Yo, no, to they endorse six them, months. Which is why people conspire that he might have some sort of financial interest that benefits him every time a that child will be is sent to That would be camp. crazy. That would be crazy. It was crazy. after this expose that the narrative surrounding Danielle's Dr. Phil episode and her whole persona started to change. She was 13. Wow. This is 100% bad parenting on the mom's part. I feel like Danielle was wronged her whole life. Also, she was 13 years old and to be judged and hated like this instead of loved and nurtured on national television. That's just setting her up. All this time, I thought this child was crazy. Now I realized it's her mom. Despite bro, Danielle- the internet's opinion changing over time is just like, bro, it's a tale as old as Earth itself, man. Bro, it, the, 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 nothing about the facts of this situation have changed at all, my nigga. We saw it all on live television, bro. Like the the we saw it all on live television. So at first it was just fun to make fun of her when so when she's 13, it's cool to make fun of her. But at 17, we got some sympathy for her. Or 16, or whatever the fuck she is at this point in the story. I just it's so weird to me how like the narrative really does change as time goes on, bro. And things like and I see it in sports all the time. It's a weird correlation. But like you everyone considers this person whatever, bro. Let me shut the fuck up reversing her reputation to the public, Bad Baby was broke. Nobody was interested in her music anymore. She had exhausted all she of her ran antics to get the attention nine million and she potentially and the burned bridges with people who could have helped her music career. Now she was only being seen as any other influencer on the internet. How the hell you run out of a nigga said good cats? A big bag. <laughs> on April 1st, 2021, <laughs> six days after her 18th birthday, Baby launched an OnlyFans account that earned over $1 million in revenue in the first six hours, including over $757,000 from subscriptions, $267,000 from message payments, and $5,000 thousand dollars in tips. Less than a month later, Baby claimed that she racked in over 50 million dollars on OnlyFans before showing off her newly purchased 6.1 million dollar home in Florida God that she allegedly damn. bought in cash. People were initially suspicious until she posted an income report with the caption, go cry about it. The screenshot showed a gross income of 52 million, with Baby taking home a net income of over 42 Yo, million. Bro. The main realization that people had from this was just how many thousands, maybe millions of people who had sexualized this child since she initially showed her face on the internet. What do you think your situation was that like made you pop off like that? Well, I was kept covered for so long, right? Like with the, how they were making me dress and sh And I was young. It's so creepy. It I is, mean, it's, it's creepy, but at the same time, like, I'm not one of them people that's like, oh, no, pedophilia is fine as long as they're, like, a little bit older. Like, no, like, no. I still think it's weird, but at the same time, 18 is 18, and that's what they said it was, so that's what they said it was. Danielle fully realized that it was because of her young age and being sexualized during her youth that allowed her to secure such a large fortune. Like, the news came out about how much money you made. 
every people from so many different walks of life that I knew were like, I'm getting an OnlyFans. Her success inspired millions of women around the world to try and do the same. Unfortunately, almost none of them will even have a fraction of the success that Danielle had. Danielle admits that she doesn't think this career path is 1 billion percent okay, but she got rich off of it, so she was willing to justify it. Bro, I'm telling you right now, I think this mindset is going to get stronger and stronger as time passes, bro. I think 10 years from now, we're going to justify a lot of pretty berserk things because it's a way to make money. I'm being very serious, bro. I'm being very serious. Like, regard, like it doesn't matter what impact it has at all, bro. If it makes you money, it's okay to you. And I think the dissenting voices will get quieter and quieter, at least in America as time goes on. <clears throat> I, I feel like that might not apply to other countries and different cultures, stuff like that. But at least here, bro, I hear it so often, bro. Niggas do and say crazy shit and they, oh, it makes me money. And that's enough justification right there for me to keep doing it. Now at age 20, Danielle has secured generational wealth. She's done with the antics, done with the attention seeking, and oh, done right. being made fun of on the internet. Now she is seemingly settling down with a man who is not famous, and they are expecting their first child in 2024. Damn. Through all her controversies and Yo, antics, she had most a happy people thought ending. she would end up broke, alone, and regretting her choices. Instead, she ended up filthy rich and settled down with a family. They laughed at her, <laughs> but it looks like she's the one who got the last laugh. Yo, that, I'm not gonna lie. On the bingo card of things that can happen in life, I didn't think I'd see that. Because so many times you see like people that have like a turbulent start just crash, my nigga, at some point in their life. But she didn't really ever truly crash, you feel me? She didn't ever truly crash like uh, the kid from the Home Alone movies that got hooked on them fucking drugs and shit. Um, but a lot of times when you get, bro, yeah, man. I guess good for her, but not really though because she's making money off lonely men, so not good for her. But at least she found a nigga that give a fuck about her, man. That's the positive part, man. Oh, so you like the video? <laughs> Boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you're gonna like that one too, man. Go ahead, just. Bro, click the link. What that? Bro, that's what I be saying. Like.